What the heck was that? Sony promised us 20 minutes of Japanese developed games coming to the PlayStation 4 and to the PlayStation 5, but I thought it'd at least be games that seemed fun or recognizable. This was a very strange state of play, but I want to go through it and talk about each of the games they showed in detail, the ones I loved, and the ones I downright hated. What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and actually right as I pressed record for this video, we passed 215,000 subscribers so thanks the channel's been blowing up i love you a bunch but now let's talk about these games as they appeared first up was a game that we all thought might be a new dino crisis when it first popped up they had a capcom logo it was a bunch of dinosaurs but then there was mech suits this is Exo Primal, which apparently seems to be some sort of cooperative mech suit shooter where we're going against leathery dinosaurs from the ancient past. Uh, it doesn't seem super great. Now, honestly, this is a very early project. They said it's coming out next year, but it's strange to see that Capcom, who currently owns Dino Crisis, is making a different dinosaur horror shooter. It feels like Capcom has just been overall doing so well that maybe they're trying to do more weird experimental stuff so i guess i respect it but exo primal does not look super fun to me now next up they showed off a bunch of ghost wire tokyo i actually can't talk about this game because i've already beaten it and i don't want to accidentally let anything slip but there's some screenshots of it from their trailer um i will be posting a review of it relatively soon now next up was stranger of paradise final fantasy origin the more i see of this game the more it very much impresses me. They're actually releasing a new demo today for it, which I'm probably going to check out. Maybe I'll make a video on it. Maybe I'll wait till next week. But Stranger of Paradise, the more I look at it, it seems like it's going to be making almost like a Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness style adventure because this character, Jack Garland, seems to be going through these separate versions of Final Fantasy. I've definitely spotted locations from Final Fantasy XII, Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy I. I don't know if this is trying to make some sort of blended timeline, but the more I see of this game, the more I think it might actually be incredibly fun. I'm buying that game. I'm definitely checking that out i'm definitely going to be doing a full-blown review when that comes out unlike another square enix game that seems to have uh, a lot of bad trailers for it which is forspoken now i'm not going to say that forspoken looks terrible but the more we see of forspoken the more i'm kind of off put by it now this was a better trailer it showed us a lot more combat but the general idea of Forspoken is that it's this little girl from uh, New York who's transported to this mystical land that is very Final Fantasy-esque. And, you know, Square Enix, they love to do that. And now she has some magical abilities to shoot fire and dodge and do short teleports. And so she's trying to go against a bunch of monsters. This newest trailer had a lot more just of her running around and exploring and stuff, which was nice. But the frame rates, the resolution, this game just seems rough they recently delayed it all the way into october so that was probably a good idea i don't want to fully hate on this i just want to say that the more i see a forespoken the more i'm kind of curious to actually play it i wish we had a demo or something because right now every bit of their pre-recorded trailer stuff does not quite win me over now, the next couple games here are tinier projects that definitely did not grab my eye. There's a new Gundam game that's apparently going to be a 6v6 shooter, which, you know, is a unique concept, but I'm not really a Gundam guy. Next up, there was a Godzilla-style brawler called Gigabash. Again, this seems like probably great for the people that are into kaiju, but uh, not for me. There was an interesting project, though, just tucked between these, though, which was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Cowabunga Collection. It is all the old school classic turtle games that we grew up with, TMNT from the 90s, except now with online co-op enabled and obviously upscaled. I gotta say, this is definitely going to be a must-buy. Uh, I am predominantly, I'm completely obsessed with uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtles in Time, uh, TMNT 4. Just that game alone is so fantastic. I'm going to be buying it specifically for that. Uh, I mean, straight up, it's Turtles, but better, and you know, I like unlocking trophies and stuff. So that 
is definitely for me. Next up, they talked about a new JoJo Bizarre Adventure fighting game, which is pretty cool. So all the weebs out there, I felt like I could see them spamming in chat how gloriously happy they were. And it's going to have 50 playable characters from all the different seasons and eras of JoJo all coming together for this big renaissance of punching each other in the face and posing dramatically. Now, let's talk about these last couple of games here. These last four games are the ones that definitely get me the most hyped and also the most curious. First was a little tiny indie game called Trek to Yomi, which is an indie side-scrolling samurai game, which seems to be your stereotypical quest for revenge. But something about the art style, something about the fact that it's just a side-scroller and based on reaction speed and combos, this thing instantly grabbed my eye. Uh, apparently it's coming out relatively soon. I'm definitely going to play that. I'm definitely going to be doing videos about that because that's the kind of stuff um, I very much like classic samurai tales. I really enjoy a really focused revenge epic. But additionally, it just looks really, really clean and fun. Especially after playing Sifu, I want more games that are just about gloriously beating up 55 dudes at once. Next up is something that I don't think that anybody could have predicted, but it's actually new content for Returnal. Returnal, the very, very good, constantly time-looping epic for the PlayStation 5, is actually getting a huge chunk of what seems to be completely free DLC. It's called the Ascension Update. It's coming out at the end of the month. This introduces a completely new tower that has a bunch of new levels, new monsters, new weapons, new buffs, and co-op. This is such a game-changing, crazy thing. I, I am so excited to play through Returnal again. Like, that game was already fun. That game was already just so twisty and motivating and mind-bending. I love, love, love Returnal. The fact that that's coming back with such a big free update is completely surreal. I I'm definitely going to be playing it co-op. That's one of those games that's going to be better if you have somebody to back you up. That is extremely cool. For zero dollars, huge tip of the hat to everybody who decided to greenlight that idea. But now let's talk about Final Fantasy Tactics. At least what we thought was going to be Final Fantasy Tactics. You see, there's been some leaks talking about that fact that uh, Final Fantasy Tactics is coming back. I decided to bring out all my different versions of it. I have every version of every single Final Fantasy Tactics because I love the series. So when this popped up... Originally, I thought it was Final Fantasy Tactics. They straight up said, this is a new project by Square Enix. They're talking about warring kingdoms and the complicated politics of combat. And then it turned out to be a project that's called Diofield Chronicle. I'm actually having to look at my notes. What is with people making games that look decent and then giving it the worst name possible? Is it just the fact that so many thousands of games exist now that you have to try and make the most creative and original title? Diofield is a terrible name. Like, I hate to be so rude, but that is a terrible name. Some people are kind of hating on the graphics and the art. I'm going to be more forgiving. I'm just glad we're getting more tactics games. And this one seems to be, at least in spirit, Final Fantasy Tactics 2. You know what? It's not the best, but I'll take it. Speaking, though, of very strange sequels that I never could have had show up, Valkyrie Elysium. They're making another Valkyrie profile game, but this one seems to be lower budget. Square Enix seems to be trying to greenlight a bunch of mid-tier projects, things like Star Ocean 6 and stuff. This seems to be part of that. It's their initiative to make sure that there is the big AAA and then there's tinier AA stuff. Um, uh, Valkyrie Elysium did not grab me. Something about her just Naruto running through levels, the really cheesy voice acting, the graphics, the weird, like, blurry, purposeful art did not work for me. Maybe it'll turn out to be great. Sometimes there's those games that are very anime aesthetic and then turn out to be fantastic later, but as it currently stands, Valkyrie Elysium is a big thumbs down from me. But that's everything that was in this. It's been a fun 20 minutes of checking out everything that they showed off. What did you think of this state of play? Was it good? Was it bad? I'd probably give it a 5 out of 10. But tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. And please, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe and keep dreaming. And I guess go play some Final Fantasy Tactics. 
Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.